Good morning. How are you? Glad you are all here. Welcome, Santiago. Hope all is well with you. It's been a pretty exciting 24 hours. Country under siege. You can imagine what it was like during the revolution and the civil war. <laughs> oh, because I haven't taken it down yet. This weekend, I love Christmas, so I like to keep it up for a little while. <laughs> and besides, it looks really pretty when the lights are on. <laughs> I always wait a couple of weeks after, then I take it down. Oscar, what are you doing? Yay, you finished your comic. That is wonderful. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do attendance. What I need, hold on a second. I'll try not to repeat. Okay, I'm going to do attendance. So what I need for you guys to do is work on your comics, get those finished and uploaded, okay? Or download it and then upload it. It has to be in Google Classroom. You need two comics in Google Classroom. Please do that right now. When I get ready to start the lesson, I need all of you to come back because there's a lot of stuff that we need to go over for you to get your introductory paragraph complete. So please work on your comic strips now. When I call you back, you need to answer and come into class to do your um, to do the lesson for your introductory paragraphs. We're supposed to be on the app. They are on the app, but I need you to upload it to Google Classroom so that they can be graded. Okay. Yay, Alexandra. Was it fun? Did you like it? Okay, good. We're going to do some more, but that's a little bit later down the road. Okay. All right. So please work on your comics when I ask you to come back for the, yeah, we're not, we're going to start the paragraphs today. So don't worry about it, Brooke. Um, we'll get it done today. Okay. Everybody's going to be working on the paragraphs. I'm just giving you a little bit of time to finish up with your comics. Get them downloaded, uploaded to your Google Drive, your Google Drive, so you can put it into your Google Classroom. All right. Okay, I'm gonna do attendance. Please work on your comics until we till I start the lesson. Remember, if you don't stay in class, then I will mark you absent. So please stay in class. I have a lot of information to share with you. Thank you. 
It goes under introduction. Are you in the right class the second semester? Esteban, make sure you're in the second semester Google Classroom. I'm gonna be closing the other one out. All right, hold on, let me show you. All right, everyone should be in half. Oops, wrong class. Hold on. Huff C2, second semester. This is where your classes are now. And if you go to classwork, you will see under ELA week of January 4th through 8th, new semester introductions. That's where your comics are, okay? you see that, Esteban? Uh, third quarter, not third semester. There's only two semesters. Third quarter. Four quarters, two semesters. Second semester. Okay. All righty. Okay. So let's get started. I need all cameras back on, please. We're going to go through some of the information that will help you to write brilliant argumentative essays. Okay. The first thing I want you to notice is that I have a resource um, tab here for you. These are materials to help you um, if you have questions or something when I'm not here. Um, it should, you might have to refresh your page, okay, Brooke? But please do that later. Right now, let's get through this so that that way you know what to do with your essay, okay? Um, I'd have to look at it later, but let me get through the lesson and then I'll help you at the end of class, okay? So in the material section, you have resources for argumentative essay. You have a note-taking technique, which helps you to, if you open it up and do a copy of it, as you are reading your articles and your the text, 
you can put things that are for grass fed um, food or processed food. So these are your statements and your examples of what you notice. You put those into the box and you just keep adding to it, okay? So it gives your supporting detail, your opinion, your thoughts, your ideas based on the information along with facts, okay? Details, evidence, and you just keep adding that to it. One side is for you, one side for the opposition, the other side, the people you're arguing against. So you keep adding to that as you read your material. After that, there's also an example of video. We're gonna look at this really quickly today. So I'm not gonna go over that. You have the weekly agenda where I have all the slides with information attached. So you can go through the agenda and that will show you everything that we've done this week, including the comics and what to do to get finished with your work. It gives you the examples. This is the writing sample and we'll talk about that once we see all of the information for completing your writing sample, your writing in, uh, essay. So let's go to our slides. We're gonna take a look at this. Um, all can be on so that we can get through this. Oh, Gabriel's here. Let me go to the slide 15, I think it is. All right, so we are here on, on Thursday. Who just came in? That was Gabriel. Sorry, I just need to know who just came in. Guevara. All right. All right, so we have two, uh, two videos that you haven't seen yet. We're gonna take a look at these so that that way you know what um, a refuting paragraph looks like and then what the whole essay is supposed to look like, okay? So this is important for being able to finish up your paragraphs. We're gonna look at this one first. When you are refuting information, what it means is you're going against the argument that someone else has. By the end of this video, you should learn the basics of writing a refutation paragraph. So there are pretty much two parts to a refutation paragraph. The first part involves you thinking about your opposition's main arguments. Don't ignore the main arguments and pick easy arguments because it makes your overall paragraph weak in the end. Okay, the opposition argument means that you are looking at the counterclaim somebody else arguing against you, okay? Then you need to prepare to summarize their main points. When you summarize their main points, you need to remain in a respectful tone, especially when you don't agree with what you're writing about. Simply summarize the argument and only pick a few points. Don't summarize every single argument your opposition has. That will overwhelm the paragraph with too much information about the opposition. Now that you've summarized the main points of your opposing audience, you need to do the second part of the paragraph. A lot of students forget to do the second part of the paragraph, and that's why they ruin their refutation paragraphs, essentially. Don't fall asleep on your argument. Do not end the paragraph by simply summarizing the opposition's viewpoints. What you need to do is you need to take their argument Guys, I have two thirds of the class with their cameras off. All of you should have your cameras on. 
you will be put in the waiting room and you will not be able to be back in class unless you have your cameras on. That's what's expected. Turn on your cameras, everyone. Hello, Logan. How's that big boy? Huh? You okay? Turn on your cameras or you will not be in class. <laughs> yeah, he's beautiful. He, he, he can hear me, I guess, huh? Argument and refute it. Or in other words, attack them and say why they're wrong. You need to maintain a respectful tone when you do this, but you want to stay bold. And you want to address every single one of the points you opened with in the paragraph. So whatever point you made about the opposition and what they believe in, you need to point by point explain why those beliefs are wrong. Now that you've summarized the opposition and then refuted each of those points, you have your refutation paragraph. Remember that your refutation paragraph is one of your three body paragraphs. A lot of students ask me where they should place the refutation paragraph. That is up to you. You can decide if you want it in the middle or at the end or at the beginning of your three body paragraphs. But in the end, you should only have three body paragraphs total, one of them being the refutation. I hope you enjoyed my quick video on refutation paragraphs and I hope it helps you write a better argument essay. Go to my YouTube page if you'd like to see more videos on all things related to college English. Thanks, bye. Okay, so basically the refutation she's talking about is that you wanna make sure that when you- To take their argument and- When you do your um, paragraph, even the, the notes in the introduction that has your opposition or your counterclaim, you have to follow it up with your own claim, going back to your claim in order to make that a solid paragraph. And you're gonna see that in a couple of these other videos. Okay. So the next one is how to write an argumentative essay. This one. We've this looked at the hamburger essay parts. format and planning. Now we're going to write the thesis statement in topic sentences and learn how to structure a paragraph properly. Now, let's look closer at your thesis statement. The most important sentence your in thesis your thesis statement uh, is made up of your opinion and three main ideas that illustrate this. We put the thesis statement in the introduction so the reader knows straight away what the writer's opinion is and what will be explored in the essay. It's important to have a strong structure when you build a house. An essay is the same. Without a good thesis statement and topic sentences that answer the question, the argument could collapse. You need a clear thesis statement which tells the reader what the essay is about. Keep your thesis as specific as you can. It also needs to be arguable, so make sure it's not too broad or general. It should refer to the three points you're going to make in your body paragraphs. Let's move on to paragraphing. Why is this important? One idea per paragraph is the world standard. It is a method for organizing your ideas and it helps your reader to follow your argument easily. Remember that you are normally awarded marks for coherence and cohesion by an examiner. In each paragraph, you need to show progression from a general statement called your topic sentence to more specific information about the same topic, followed by an example. Then you finish by linking back to your thesis statement. Your paragraph should be about four or five sentences long. That's a really minimum. simple way of doing this is to follow the Peel structure. P, 
This is your topic sentence, a general statement that summarizes the main idea of the paragraph. E. This is additional information you give to support the topic sentence. It should explain why the topic sentence is relevant to the essay question. E. This is your evidence to support your topic sentence. This could be one or two examples and is usually a fact, a personal experience or a physical description of something. This might be two sentences long if you have more than one example. L. This is your link back to the topic sentence and shows how your point answers the question. This is a great way you of can use transition up your words paragraph. or phrases for your link, such as this shows us that this helps to answer the question because and it links it back to you can your swap main the elaboration idea. and example sentences around and the statement. Then the example sentence would be evidence to support the topic sentence and the elaboration sentence would explain how the example supports your topic sentence. Don't try to be creative here. Make sure you follow this structure for each paragraph and don't miss out one of the stages or use an example as a point. Okay, I wanna show you that one color that she used. Okay, see how she uses colors for the regular paragraphs, but then when she gets to this third body paragraph, she changes the color to red because that helps you to know that that's your ref, uh, the refutation paragraph. This is your argument. This is where you have the counterclaim plus your claim all combined together in one paragraph. This is important. And don't miss out one of the stages or use an example as a point. Finally, we use linking devices in essay writing to connect ideas in several ways. To link clauses in sentences using words like and, so, but, and because. Those words should always be found in the middle of the sentence. So you have a sentence on one side of it and a sentence on the other side of it. These are conjunctions. In America, we call them conjunctions. In Britain, they call them linkers. But these conjunctions go in the middle of a sentence, not so much at the beginning of a sentence. To link topic sentences and the thesis statement. These are called transition words. They help us to know that there's more information coming about that topic. So using transition words is going to help um, show that you understand your essay a lot better. To link the introduction to the conclusion. These are also transition words. To link paragraphs using words such as furthermore to add information, however or nevertheless to introduce contrasting ideas, and in conclusion to summarize what you have said before. We use linkers or conjunctions to make sure that our ideas gel together to answer the essay question. Remember that words such as and, so, because, tend to go in the middle of sentences, not the start. In this section, we have looked at thesis statement and topic sentences, paragraphing, peel, and linking. Don't forget to make sure your thesis statement is not too broad or too general, and make sure it is arguable. Write about one idea per paragraph. Use the peel structure, writing four or five sentences for each paragraph, and use linkers to connect your ideas together. Don't just make a series of points one after the other. Make one and then expand on that point with your elaboration and example. For more
Okay, so that's how you put it all together. Like that hamburger, you wanna make sure that your paragraphs are clear, concise, and that they make sense. All right, we're gonna go to the next slide. This one. This is the one that I have separate on the uh, web website. It shows Hello, students. You how to I have made this video to help you understand the basic format of an argumentative essay. Remember when we brainstormed and we did that in-class activity where we we went over the different parts of the essay. You did most of the work in brainstorming your ideas, and I've put the essay together for you. So let's take a look at the essay. The first thing I want you to understand is that all essays have a title. That is something that I have not been seeing on the essays from first and second quarter. You have to have a title that relates to your essay. Everybody has to create a, a title. He's going to tell you one of the ways to do it is to relate it to the thesis, but you have to have a title. I'm not going to give you a title. You have to create the title. Have a title that represents the purpose of your essay. You should have a very specific title that represents your thesis statement. So for example, here, my thesis statement is about getting rid of the plastic cups. So I say, you know, one way is to stop making plastic cups available to the students. And then if you look at the title, it says, where are all the cups? So where are all the cups is kind of associated with the idea that we need to get rid of the plastic cups. So certainly there has to be a good title. There should be an introduction with background information and thesis statement. Here, I've underlined the thesis statement. Let's take a look at the background information and let's see how it connects to the thesis statement, okay? It says here, the environmental issues in today's world are growing more serious by the day. As a result, it is increasingly important for schools and colleges to teach good environmental habits. Have you ever seen a student or a teacher take a sip of water and throw the plastic cup away? This is not a good habit. Here at Fujera Women's College, I think we must start taking action to lessen our impacts on the environment. One way, is to stop making plastic cups available to the students. So here, background, here, thesis statement. And here, remember what we talked about in class, our thesis statement, we need to be asking someone to take an action. That's what an argumentative essay is. And here, the action is, we want the college to stop making plastic cups available. So that's an action we want the college to take. Now, body paragraph one, remember, topic sentence one is the first reason why this is true. Remember the, the idea of a because test? Well, I'm gonna give a because test. Here's my thesis. One way is to stop making the plastic cups available to the students. In other words, one way to protect the environment is to stop making plastic cups because using plastic cups is bad for the environment and because getting rid of plastic cups will be good for the college so this is the this is the first reason this is the first reason why the thesis is true this is the second reason why the thesis is true and that is very very important your topic sentences are the two reasons why the thesis is true all right, so okay. I'm going to stop making class here. plastic. You'll be able to watch this, but he's outlining exactly how you take the information from your, your uh, template and you stretch it out into an essay using your topic sentence, your supporting evidence, your uh, supporting details, your evidence, and your explanation and your thesis statement. So how do you put those into paragraphs? This is how you do it. Now, this is a very simple essay. Um, on the writing scale, it would be a two and a half, maybe a three, depending on 
what the rubric says. So I'm going to show you the rubric as well as soon as we take a quick look at this next video. This one is to help you be able to actually take your outline and put it with your, uh, create your essay. How to go about writing your outline before actually writing your academic essay. Okay, what we see first is, I'm going to expand here and show you the outline as a whole. This is a simple outline, what we see is that, but it um, still has the thesis the statement there. The academic paper for the argumentative essay is divided into five separate paragraphs. One is the introduction. The second is the first body paragraph, then another body paragraph, then uh, one actual paragraph here containing a counter argument and a rebuttal. This is the fourth paragraph. So and those the go together. With the conclusion. Then you take, paper. once you're done and with your introductory the paragraph, uh, the outline, paragraph. then you start putting it into your paragraph. In school nowadays. The general picture outline like paragraph. Is that of a 12 year old student sitting in the hallway at school with an iPad. Add to this picture small groups of friends enjoying their games together during breaks. Until so these are complete sentences the based on their topic. And we'll launch the apps necessary. So I'm not going to go over all of this. Um, you are going to be able to watch it. I just wanted you to see really good examples of how to take that outline and stretch those bullet ideas into a paragraph. And this is a really good paragraph that you can look at. It has all the parts for that introductory paragraph you're creating. The next is, I wanna go over the rubric. Last one. Okay, and then you'll see Okay, so when we look at the resources, in your ELA is your assignment, which is where you are creating your template. Oops. Your template is here. Okay. You have your template, which you are completing your outline. You have examples of articles that you can look up and use in your essay. These articles are some that I found for you. You can use these or you can find your own, okay? But the examples are there for you. Then you also have the rubric, and this is what's important because you need to look at the rubric. Do you want a one, two, three, or four? Fours are very hard to get because you have to meet every single item in the four category to get a four, okay? The threes are a little bit easier but again, you need to make sure that you are sustaining your writing, your response to the uh, claims. You want to make sure that you're, it's clear and evident, organizational structures, that you have a sense of completeness for the argument that you are creating. All right. You want to maintain the claim. If you're saying that processed food is bad for humans, you need to maintain why is it bad for humans? Tell us why. You need to also state the opposing claim. You say that it's bad for us, but somebody else says it's okay. It's good. Why? You want to use transitional strategies, those linky linkers that was on the video transition words, 
co um, conjunctions. Make sure that those are connecting your sentences or starting your sentences. Um, you want to have adequate progression of ideas from beginning to end with a sufficient introduction and conclusion. Those need to be solid. That's why we're taking so much time with the introduction. Make sure that it's appropriate style and tone. You are creating an argument. You need to show that it is an argument without being rude to the opposite side. You want to stay polite. Okay. When you get to the evidence and elaboration, you see how this is separate. It's scored totally separate from the purpose, the focus, and the organization. So this is scored separate from this. Evidence and, and uh, elaboration means that you are providing adequate support Okay, um, make sure that you look at the slides, okay? Um, make sure that you are citing evidence for the writer's claim uh, that includes the use of sources. Where did you get your information? What are those articles that you use? What's the text that you use? Who wrote the articles? Who wrote the text? You need to include that information in order to cite evidence. You need specific facts and details. If you just give your opinion, nobody's going to take you seriously. You need specific facts and details. Integrate. Um, and relevant, integrated and relevant evidence from sources, though references may be general or imprecise. To get a four, it needs to be smoothly integrated, thorough and relevant evidence, including precise references to sources. This one is so specific, that's what makes it hard to get a four. This one is a little bit easier, but it's still specific enough to know whether it's a three or a four. This one is weak. You don't want weak evidence. Adequate um, use of some elaborative techniques. That means short sentences, long sentences, combined sentences, sentences that might have an independent clause connected with a dependent clause. So you need to have different sentence structures. You need to have exclamations and you need to have questions. Those are elaborative techniques in your essay. Adequate expression of ideas, employing a mix of precise and general language. Use some of the words from your text and your articles in your essay, that makes it stronger for you. Domain specific vocabulary, that's where that vocabulary comes in. Like Michael Poland says that the way that cows are processed on those in those industrial farms is disgusting. He's giving you tone by using specific words, okay? And variation in sentence structure. That's your questions and your exclamations and your commands. Using those variations in sentence structure. The last area that you are graded on are your conventions. You demonstrate an adequate command of basic conventions. The response may be may include the following: some minor errors in usage, but no patterns of errors. That means if you misspell words, find a way to fix them. Look them up if you have to, but don't misspell words, especially your basic eighth grade words. Adequate use of punctuation, capitalization, sentence formation, and spelling. 
okay? These are all important. This is what you are being graded by, okay? All right, let's go back to This one. So in your resources, you also have an example of what these essays look like when you are actually writing. This is a writing sample. These are, hang on, Sanaya, I'm almost finished. These are examples of what your essay should look like, but it's for seventh graders. So you need to think, okay, I'm eighth grade. I need to up this a little bit. So when you look at the writing samples up here, these are the points that are scored. This is a perfect paper, four, four, two. Remember there was three areas on the rubric that you're being scored on. That's a four, four, and a two. If you read through this essay, you're going to see, okay, this student has exclamation marks. They have their, that's their hook. They have their um, topic sentence. They have quotations, things that they've quoted. Um, they have other information here, details, examples. They're using transition words. And here they have, this is not an argumentative essay, but they have uh, a, basically a conclusion. Unfortunately, the hardcore gamers out there are in, in for another story. Then look at the sentence that starts their next topic sentence. According to research, they don't say when I researched this, it's according to research. That is a linker, that's a transition into the next paragraph. Here you have source one. This is a citation that tells where their information came from. Source two, where did this information come from? You have to have this information in order to get your paper to a three or a four, okay? Without using things like this, source one, source two, or the name of the uh, author for your article, you're not getting a three or a four, okay? All of this is important. So take a look at these. This is an excellent paper. Let's take a quick look at one that is not so excellent. Oops, there we go. Okay, this one is a three. So it's still a good paper. It has a nice hook, but it's missing information. It's missing some better language, okay? Some examples, where are the sources at? It's not telling us where they get their information, okay? Where are those transitions? No quotes. This one is a 322. Two. Again, looking at the scores, where do you want your paper to be? Take a look at the examples and figure out what kind of writing do I want to be scored on? This one's very short. They don't have enough information to make it a good quality paper. This one is a 2-2. See the difference? Look how short it is. It doesn't have any 
of the, the information that you need to make it a better paper. It's not following the rubric. All right. So this is here to help you make the best essay that you possibly can. You have a paper that's a two one one. They wrote one paragraph. I think that the best way to fix this problem is time limits. You have to put a time limit on your Xbox or PS3. We have to make time for what actually matters to you, family, exercise, and right food chooses. Doesn't even make sense. It's not clear, it's not concise. It has no relating information, okay? So the examples are here to help you fix and write your essay. Right now, I need you to go to the template. The templates are due tonight because it's been there for two days. It's due tonight so that we can go over it tomorrow and turn it into a paragraph. Are there any questions? Talk to me, raise your hand. Jasmine, is that up from now or from before? Jasmine? Yeah. Was your hand up? Oh, uh, no, that was from earlier. Okay. Yes, Sine, you can go. Does anyone have questions? Because I'm grading your paper based on that rubric. So if you need help, I want to help you do it correctly. No questions. Please work on your templates. You have nine minutes to go. Please work on your templates. Um, Luis, you are typing it into Google Docs starting tomorrow. That's why you need to have the template done today so that you can have it side by side to do your um, introduction, okay? Everyone should be working on the template, creating your omnivore dilemma introduction. Look at the rubric, decide where you want to be scored. Do you want fours, threes, twos, or ones?
Anyone have questions about what they're looking at? Remember, I did put resources here for you for finding your articles. You can use one of the articles here or two of the articles. I'm fine with that, but you need to read it and take notes. Make sure you know where, where your articles are because at the very end, we will cite where our articles came from. Find your articles so that that way you can read them and take notes. If you have other sources that you want to use, you can use those. Just know where you got them from, what the titles of them are, who the author is. Um, you can, if you want to, if you think it's valuable for your essay. Remember, you also have the textbook. You have Omnivore's Dilemma that you can look at too. Michael Pollan, that's what we've been reading. There's lots of information there as well. In the end, you'll have three sources. The textbook should be one of them. If you want more, that's fine. Does anyone need any help? Let me know. Remember, you also have that template. Oops. 
went the wrong way. You also have the um, outline, the note taking page. If I can get it to open, it won't open. This note taking page is also there for you to make a copy of so you can put your, your notes for your articles and your text, things that you wanna include in your essay. So you can make a copy of this and you can add your own notes if you want to or you can do it on a piece of paper. It's up to you. No questions at all? I do expect the templates done by tomorrow when you come to class. All right, you're free to go. Have a great day. See you tomorrow with completed work. And upload those comics tonight, today. See you later.